Okay, today we come to the book of Second Chronicles. We are in Second Chronicles chapter 8, and Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. This is at the end of 20 years, during which Solomon built the temple of the Lord and his own palace. And it took Solomon seven years to build the temple, and 13 years to build his palace. And in verse 2 it says, Solomon rebuilt the villages that Hiram had given him and settled Israelites in them. And those cities were in northwest Galilee. Verse 3, Solomon then went to Hamath Zobah and captured it. Hamath Zobar was a confederacy of two Syrian kingdoms, Verse 4, he also built up Tadmor in the desert in all the store cities he had built in Hamath. The store cities were fortified towns in the north. They were designed for trade with other nations and also to help defend against an attack. Verse 5, he rebuilt Upper Beth Horon and Lower Beth Horon as fortified cities with walls and with gates and bars. And these cities were toward the Philistine territory. Verse 6, as well as Baalath and all his store cities and all the cities for his chariots and for his horses, whatever he desired to build in Jerusalem and Lebanon and throughout all the territory he ruled. The best way to avoid war is to make yourself so strong that no one would dare attack. That is, in part anyway, why Solomon is building up all these cities. 7. All the people left from the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, these peoples were not Israelites, that is, their descendants remaining in the land whom the Israelites had not destroyed, these Solomon conscripted for his slave labor force as it is to this day. And so Solomon spared the lives of these heathen. He allowed them to live, but they had to serve Israel and uh, everything they did was taxed. Verse 9, But Solomon did not make slaves of the Israelites for his work. They were his fighting men, commanders of his captains, and commanders of his chariots and charioteers. They were also King Solomon's chief officials, 250 officials supervising the men. There were no hired soldiers in the Israelite army. They were all Israelites. In verse 11, Solomon brought Pharaoh's daughter up from the city of David to the palace he had built for her, for he said, My wife must not live in the palace of David, king of Israel, because the palace or the places of the ark of the Lord has entered are holy. And so um, Solomon's experiences with God in the temple in Jerusalem caused him to understand that God's presence was there in a very special way, and that Jerusalem, therefore, was a very holy city. And as a result, he built a home outside of Jerusalem for his unbelieving wife to live in. And um, if he could not bring her into God's presence, you know what? He should not have married her. And this sort of thing, this marrying of foreign women who did not know the Lord, really became Solomon's downfall and the downfall of the entire nation eventually. So this is a bad first step. If you can't bring your wife into the presence of God because she doesn't have a relationship with him, you know, then you're marrying the wrong person. Verse 12, On the altar of the Lord that he had built in front of the portico, Solomon sacrificed burnt offerings to the Lord according to the daily requirement for offerings commanded by Moses for Sabbaths, new moons, and the three annual feasts, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. These three religious feasts occurred every single year in Jerusalem, and it was mandatory for every Israelite man to attend these feasts. 14. In keeping with the ordinance of his father David, he appointed the divisions of the priests for their duties and the Levites to lead the praise and to assist the priests according to each day's requirement. He also appointed the gatekeepers by divisions for the various gates 
because that was what David, the man of God, had ordered. And so Solomon didn't change any of the directions or the instructions that David, his father, drew up for the operation of the temple. He didn't feel the need to, and he didn't change anything because his father was a man of God, and Solomon trusted his father's judgment and his walk with the Lord. 15. They did not deviate from the king's commands to the priest or to the Levites in any matter, including that of the treasuries. The king mentioned here, by the way, is David, not Solomon. 16. All Solomon's work was carried out from the day the foundation of the temple of the Lord was laid until its completion. So the temple of the Lord was finished. Solomon kept the project going. It was his top priority until the entire structure was finished and operational. Verse 17, Then Solomon went to Ezion, Geber, and Elath on the coast of Edom. And Hiram sent him ships commanded by his own officers, men who knew the sea. These with Solomon's men sailed to Ophir and brought back 450 talents of gold, which they delivered to King Solomon. These nations had been defeated by David, during his reign, which is why they are paying tribute to his son, King Solomon. That was part of the deal. Next time, chapter 9. Until then, so long everyone.